methods for identifying the chemical formula if you're given, let's say, the chemical name. Down here is a chemical name. So if I'm given the chemical name, I can identify the chemical formula. Or if I'm given the chemical formula, then I can actually identify the oxidation number of the positive ion. So this method I'm going to show you today is called T-chart method. Let's take a look at it. So what we start with then, uh, we have to look at ionic compounds. Remember, ionic compounds are those compounds where the metals are going to transfer electrons to the non-metals. So metal and non-metal combination comes together, we get an ionic compound. In our periodic table, once again, the metals are on the left-hand side, non-metals are on the right-hand side, excluding, of course, the noble gases. All elements want to be like the noble gases, a complete outer shell. So we're going to transfer electrons in order to have that happen. What's really important for us, will help us tremendously, are these Roman numerals at the top of the periodic table. They are going to indicate to us, for each column, the oxidation number for that element. Let's take a look at one example. So here I have strontium iodide. I'm a former compound and I want to know the correct ratio of the elements. So when strontium and iodine come together, let's find strontium first on our periodic table. Here it is, strontium, uh, there it is, boom, strontium. Okay, so strontium is in Roman numeral two, that column Roman numeral two. That means strontium has an oxidation number of, you guessed it, two, and it's gonna be a plus. 2 plus oxidation number. Fantastic. Great. What else we combine this with? Iodide. So iodide then is going to be found on the non-metal side of the periodic table. And iodine, there it is, right here. So iodine is in Roman numeral, the column Roman numeral 7. That's 5, 6, 7. So Roman numeral 7, that's great. So that does not mean that it has 7 oxidation number. What we do instead is the following. We will say that, you know what? If I have a metal, then the oxidation number is going to equal the Roman numeral for that column. If I have a non-metal though, non-metal, oxidation number is going to be equal to the Roman numeral minus 8. So if you recall, iodine had a Roman numeral of 7, and I subtract 8 from that, 7 minus 8, here we go, hard math, 7 minus 8, carry the 1 minus 2, that's equal to, you guessed it, very good, negative 1. So the oxidation number actually is a 1 minus. So strontium is a 2 plus, iodine is a 1 minus. Excellent. Let me get rid of this so I have room to work here. Get rid of you. Bye-bye. Okay, so let's do this. Let's put this into then our T-chart. So strontium we know has the symbol of S, R, and it has a 2 plus oxidation number. Iodine has a symbol of I, and it's capital I, and it has a 1 minus oxidation number. Fantastic. Let's start with strontium. So if I have, let's say, one ion of strontium, I'll put a box here representing that I have one ion of strontium. That gives me a two plus positive two charge, if you will. And then I have to balance this out. Remember, all chemical formulas must be electrically neutral, must be balanced. So I have then another box here for iodine. So every ion of iodine, though, counts for only one negative charge. So these two right now do not balance up. I need more of this iodine. So if I put another box here, another ion, and that too has a one minus charge, now I've got plus two and a minus two. I have two ions of iodine and one ion of strontium. So my ratio is a one to two ratio. So when I write my chemical formula, it'll be SR1, I don't write the one, I2, and that subscript, once again, represents the number of atoms or number of ions of that particular species. All set there, hopefully that makes sense. Let's go on then to another example. What if I'm given the chemical formula? So I have chemical formula. I know that I have two ions of iron and one ion of sulfur. Let's put this in. So here's my iron and here's my sulfur. Now it's tricky here because Iron is one of these transitional metals. There it is. Here's iron. It's the transitional metals here. Boom. These are transitionals. So these Roman numerals don't correspond exactly. So iron can actually have more than one oxidation number. Let's go back. Sulfur, on the other hand, sulfur here is found in Roman numeral six. So I know that sulfur has an oxidation number of, that's right, two minus because six minus eight 
Roman numeral, minus eight equals a negative two. So boom. So I know how many ions of sulfur I have is one. So I'll put the box here then with a negative two charge, two minus there. And I know I have two ions of iron. So a box here and a box here. So what must the charge of each of these ions be if I have a two to one ratio? You guessed it, a one plus. Perfect. So now I know this iron was a one plus. I've just worked backwards in my T-chart and identified then the oxidation number of iron to be one plus. Hope that helps you. Work the T-chart. Don't let it work you.